Good day to you viewers. You are welcome to Biology at Access. In today's class, we'll be looking at DNA replication. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe and click on the notification button so that you will be notified anytime we post new videos. Back to our topic, what is DNA replication? DNA replication is a process by which a cell makes identical copy of its DNA. As the name implies, DNA replication is a process by where DNA replicates itself. It will replicate itself. This process is very important before cell division so that the daughter cells can receive the exact genetic information from the parents. From the parents. Okay. In, in addition to that, we must note that we have models of DNA replication. Models of DNA replication. And scientists have, have come out with three models. You have the semi-conservative models, the conservative model, and the dispersive model. The models of DNA replication include semi-conservative model, conservative model, and the dispersive model. However, the most acceptable models of DNA replication is the semi-conservative model. The most acceptable model of DNA replication is semi-conservative model. And that will be our focus in today's class, semi-conservative model. What is semi-conservative model of DNA replication? In semi-conservative model of DNA replication, what's happening? Uh, the process includes to include the strands of DNA separating from one another. When they separate from one another, these strands will now act as a template for a new, a new complementary strand. Now, let's use this diagram to explain properly. Let's use this diagram to explain. Now, this is a DNA strand, a DNA molecule with two strands, a strand A and strand B. Don't forget uh, antiparallelism. This one runs from 3 prime to 5 prime. Why this one runs from 5 prime to 3 prime? Now, we have two strand here, two strand here, strand A and strand B. The first thing that will happen during semi conservative model is that the two strands will be separated. A has been separated from B. Now, after separation, they will now undergo replication. When they undergo replication, strand A will serve as a template for the production of a new strand which is strand C. And strand B will serve as a template for the production of another new strand, which is strand D. So in semi-conservative model, we now have the combination of the old strand and the new strand. That's why we call it semi-conservative model. Semi-conservative model. We now have the, the new strand and the old strand. We still have strand A, which is the old strand, and we now have C, which is a new strand. We still have B, which is the old strand, and we now have D, which is the new strand. And the new strands that are produced are complementary to the old strands. So it means that if the old strand runs from 3 prime to 5 prime, the new strand will be 5 prime to 3 prime. So in, in semi-conservative model, it has to do with the production of a new strand or the replication of a new strand using the old strand as template, with both the old strand being preserved or being conserved. Having a look at semi-conservative model, let's now uh, take a look at the process of DNA replication. The process of DNA replication, the mechanism involved when DNA want to replicate, want to produce an, an identical copy of, its, of itself. What are the steps? What are the processes involved? What are the mechanisms involved? That is what we'll be looking at shortly. Now, in, when DNA, the processes of DNA replication involve, the first step in the process of DNA replication is the unzipping of DNA. Don't forget that DNA are made up of double-stranded and they are wrapped together. They are, they are wrapped together. However, when they want to undergo replication, they need to be unwind. They need to be separated. 
So the first step in DNA replication is the unzipping, the separation, the, 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 the unzipping, the unwinding of DNA strand. The two DNA strands need to be separated. And the enzyme that helps in the unzipping of DNA, of DNA strand is what we call helicase. Helicase. Helicase unzip DNA strand. And that's what you can see in this place. You can see that helicase has on these two strands of DNA and now separate them. It's, they are now separated to the enzyme known as helicase. So that's the first step in DNA replication. Helicase unzip DNA strand. Helicase unzip DNA strand. After the separation of DNA, the next step is that the next step is primates produce primer. Primates produce primer. Primates produce primer. Primates is another form of enzymes. Primates is another form of enzyme. These primates will produce primers. What is the function of these primers? These primers help to initiate replication. These primers, this primer produced by primates help to initiate replication. How? It is this primer that we assist another enzyme called DNA polymerase. Now, DNA polymerase is the actual enzyme that helps in DNA replication. It is DNA polymerase that helps in DNA replication. But DNA polymerase cannot start the process of replication all by itself. It needs help. It needed help. It needs help. So what will help DNA polymerase to start the process of replication is the primer. And what will produce the primer is the primase. So the primase produce the primer. The primer helps the DNA polymerase to start the process of replication, as you can see here. As you can see, if you see from what is here, this is the, D, uh, this is the RNA primer. This is the RNA primer, or the primer, this is the RNA primer. And then, the RNA primer will now start the process of initiation. Once they start, it will now start the process of replication, rather. It will start the process of replication. Once it start the process of replication, the DNA polymerase can now begin to synthesize new strands. It can now begin to synthesize new strands. So let's quickly go over it again for better understanding. The first step is that early case we unzip DNA strand. The second step is that primers will produce primates. Primates will produce primer. Primer, primates will produce primer. And what is the work of the primers? The primers will help the DNA polymerase in the process of replication. In the process of replication. Now let's go to the DNA polymerase proper. Let's go to the DNA polymerase proper. D don't forget that DNA polymerase is the enzyme that helps in the process of replication. The DNA polymerase is the enzyme that helps in the process of replication. So it is the DNA polymerase that will produce the new strands of DNA. It is the DNA polymerase that will produce new strands of DNA. Now, what I'm about to say is very important. Now, you must listen very well. Now, DNA primers had new strands from 5' prime to 3' prime using 5', 3' prime and 5' prime strand as templates. Now, when DNA polymerase want to start producing a new strand of DNA, when it's, when it's about to start synthesizing new strands of DNA, it will start adding new strands of DNA from a 5' prime end to a 3' prime end. So DNA primers had new strands from 5' prime end to a 3' prime end. So if DNA polymerase is adding from a 5' prime end to a 3' prime end, that means that the other strands must be 3' prime to 5' prime. So when DNA polymerase wants to start producing new strands, it will start from a 5' prime end to a 3' prime end using the 3' prime to 5' prime strand as templates. As templates. So when DNA polymerase wants to start producing new strands, it will 
start the production from a five prime to a three prime strand. But the template of production, the template of replication will be three prime to five prime, as you can see here. This, this, the old strand is from three prime to five prime. But the new strand produced by DNA polymerase is a five prime to three prime. Don't forget, DNA polymerase adds new strands from a five prime end to a three prime end using three prime to five prime strand as templates. And you can see that the three prime to five prime strand is the leading strand. Why is it the leading strand? Because replication along the three prime to five prime strand is continuous. You can see that the lines are jointed together. The lines are continuous. They, 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 are not, they, are not, they are not break into, they are not broken down into segments. It is flowing. It is flowing. That's why it is called the leading strand. However, at the other side of the strand, if you look at the other side of the strand, where we have the five prime to three prime, the five prime to three prime is called the lagging strand. The five prime to three prime, the five prime to three prime strand is called the lagging strand. It's called the lagging strand. Why this one is the leading strand? Why is this one the leading strand? Because it is the template strand that DNA polymerase will use to produce a new strand. Three prime to five prime strand is the leading strand because DNA polymerase will use it as a template to produce a new strand, and that new strand is five prime to three prime. Now let's come let's come back to this other strand. For this other strand, replication will not be continuous. Replication in this other strand will not be continuous. It will not be continuous. It will not be continuous because DNA polymerase will now begin to add the new strands as segments. Look at it. You just add it as set. It's not, it's not continuous like this one. It will be adding it as segment. As segment, 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 segment. So the, 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 the replication along this strand is discontinuous. Replication along the lagging strand, which is five prime to three prime, is discontinuous. However, replication along the leading strand which is the three prime to five prime is continuous. Is continuous. Note that is continuous. Now, after the repl after replication have taken place, DNA ligase will join the Okazaki fragment together. Now, this fragment, all these small small fragments, they are called Oka. Zaki fragments. They are called Okazaki fragments. However, this fragment needs they 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 they, they needed to, they needed to be joined together. So the enzyme that will join them together is what we call the DNA ligase. Is what we call the DNA ligase. So the DNA ligase join the Okazaki fragment together along the lagging strand. Which is the five prime to three prime strand. Not only that, exonucleus remove the primers. Don't forget when we started, we said that the primers we assist, we assist the DNA polymerase to produce new strands. So, but the the, 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 the primers are RNA in nature. They don't. They, they are not needed in the new copies of DNA. That is about to be produced, so they need to be. They need to be removed. We need to remove them. So the the the, the, the enzyme that will remove them is exonucleus. So the exonucleus will remove this primer. The exonucleus will remove this primer. Once the primers are removed by the exonucleus, we now have two new copies of DNA. Two new copies of DNA. Two new copies of DNA. So we now have two new copies of DNA. They will be separated here. We now have two new copies. This is a copy. This is another copy. This is a copy of DNA. This is another copy of DNA. They will now be joined together like this. They will be joined together. Don't forget what will join the Okazaki fragment together is the DNA 
ligase is the DNA ligase. It will join the Okazaki fragment together. So when it joins the Okazaki fragment together, the exonucleus will remove the primer. So when the primers are removed, we now have two DNA molecules. Two DNA molecules consisting, each of them consists of a one old strand and one new strand. Hence, they are semi conservative in nature. They are semi conservative in nature. Now, if you look at the process I've just, we have described so far, we discover that. If you look at the process that we have discussed over, we draw that we have some enzymes that are, that are part of the process. The first enzyme is helicase. What is the function of the helicase? It helps to unwind DNA. The second enzyme is primase. What is the function of the primase? It produces primer that it produces primer that that will assist the DNA polymerase. The third enzyme that we have is DNA polymerase. What is the function of the DNA polymerase? To it is the DNA polymerase that will initiate the process of replication. In fact, it is the DNA polymerase that will produce the new strands of DNA. And don't forget that the DNA polymerase we had new strands from a five prime end to a three prime end. Another enzyme that we look at is the DNA ligase. The DNA ligase. What is the function of the DNA ligase? It will remove. No, the function of the DNA ligase is to join the Okazaki fragment together. And where do we have the Okazaki fragment? We have the Okazaki fragment at the lagging strand, which is the discontinuous strand. Then finally, we have the exonucleus. What is the function of the exonucleus? The exonucleus is to remove primer. Is to remove primer. That is a summary of the process of DNA replication.